Hello, Michael here with another Redshift tutorial. Today we're just going to be having a really quick look at IES light profiles, what they are and how you might use them with Redshift. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Derek Jensen's website. There's a couple of other places you can find IES light profiles, but I thought this package was quite useful. I'll put a link in the description to find this um, and maybe check out some more of Derek's work while you're there. He's got some good stuff. It's um, worth getting inspired when you've got the chance to do so. But um, just download the file and extract it anywhere on your hard drive, somewhere that's easy to access from Maya would be useful. Once you've done that, jump back into Maya and we're going to create an IES light. So we're going to go up to Redshift, go to Lights and go to IES Light. And you'll see you get this thing here which looks very unexciting. Um, we need to plug in an IES Light profile to it. So we'll go to the Attribute Editor for it. We'll go to IES Profile and we'll click Open. And then go to where you extracted your file to. And you'll see you have a couple of, uh, you've got a few different options here. Um, so these are all based on real world lights. Basically what happens when a manufacturer makes a new type of light, they will release the IES profile for free uh, to the internet um, for people like us to use essentially. Uh, so let's grab the jellyfish just as an example and you'll see it's actually changed the geometry of the light which is really useful for visualization. It's a really good feature that Redshift has included. Um, and then this just works exactly like a normal light. So I'll just run an IPR now. All right, that light's a little bit hot. Let's just um, make it 0.05. Okay, so you can see that it is creating a scattering effect. Um, it's a little bit hard to see because of the contrast, but um, that's one example. I'll do one more quick example while you're here. So a bollard is a really common type of light. Um, you would find this in uh, photography studios all around the world. It's essentially a, a light with a diffuser in front of the center of it. So um, you can block light from a target source essentially. So if I increase this to one, yeah, there you go. That gives you a pretty good look at it. And that's really all there is to it. And then otherwise it works exactly like your other lights. You can control the diffuse, you control the specular. Um, Volume will work with this as well. It's actually really good for shooting out uh, rays of light through volume uh, for God rays and those sorts of effects if you're looking for a little bit more variation than just a straight uh, spotlight or something like that. But that's really all there is to it. I just wanted to put this tutorial up because I know a lot of uh, people out there aren't necessarily aware by default that this is a thing that you can do. So I thought it would be worth sharing. So uh, yes, hopefully you like this one. Make sure you click the like button if you did, uh, just so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed so you can see a couple of new CG tutorials every week, just like this one. If you want to stay up to date as well, you can check out the Facebook page, which you can get to using the link in the description. Uh, that's it for now, though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.